thank you. Um, to Bernard Munna, Katrina, um, you are, I know that you're doing works in several bogs um, around the country. Um, there are a few things. Why is Bordon Mona persistent at the moment um, in the Midland bogs when you talk about preserving bogs? And I know that you're doing, look at Dengan and a lot of places that you've done a lot of work in, um, or Betty Dengan. Um, and in the Midlands, you have put in um, application for a lot of wind turbines around near Mount Dillon, um, which will take basically digging out a lot of bog, putting in roadways, and digging out serious areas to put up the turbines. How is that when you talk about conservation that that is still uh, going on? Second of all, um, in, the, in the line of the consultation, and you talked about it there, um, I know that you're at a time and bog at the moment. Well, farmers around there have told me that there has been no consultation with them in the line of, yes, there's some bogs near it, but there would be land as well, and I'm just wondering, G or would ye if if I actually invited ye? I have a I have an email sent in already um, to ask ye would ye engage with the people in that area. Thirdly, in the line of as brought up by uh, Deputy Healy Ray, the 450 jobs that's redundancies. I think I don't see uh, where there was any plan for uh, other jobs in that. And fourthly, in your land division or in your year moved from the west of Ireland, to put it bluntly, that there will be no jobs west of the Shannon producing anything in the line of peat um, for Borden and Mona. Um, in the restoration of bogs, would it not have been a good idea to um, hold some from uh, uh, Derifada or areas like that, machine people that would be, you know, have great expertise down through the years, because obviously anyone that worked out in the bogs, they, they were driving machines. Um, would it not be advisable to give them priority, even if it only took two or three years, and said, well, we'll give you the redundancy after that, or get another job? I know that it's, you're, from my understanding, on Willow, and correct me if I'm wrong, that no headway has been made in the tonnage. Um, and on the fish project, I think it will be seven years. So there's no immediate um, sort of rainbow in the horizon for those workers in those areas that will give them work, especially in a lot of rural areas. Um, and I'd just like you to comment on that. Now, I think that does the whole committee agree, or the, 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 uh, say the different witnesses agree, that we're in here talking about um, uh, we've gone on to climate change and all the different things. It's the Habitats Directive uh, that was the reason the 53 bogs, and, and let's be clear on that, for the, to preserve them, uh, because Europe, as Ms O'Connell rightly pointed out, uh, parts of Europe had dug away all they had. Um, and I just want clarification on that. Um, to Brian, um, uh, Lucas, um, we are at a stage at the moment, and I think all witnesses, I'd like them to comment on this, we are at a stage at the moment where you will solve no problem in this country, whether you like it or whether you don't, unless you bring the landowner with you and the community with you. And whether people like that or don't, because the, the reality of it is, while Katrina talks about something like 80,000 hectares or whatever, or Namona has, a lot of private people either have turbary rights or ownership of their bog. And in fairness to the National Parks, and I will say in fairness to Brian Lucas, over the last two to three years, um, he has tried to get, where is possible, relocation sites uh, as close to people as possible which is acceptable, and, and I want to make it clear that I'm chairman of the TCCA, um, to move people from A to B where there is quali the quality turf and where it's near, near enough them, four or five miles from them, right? And they are working on that at the moment. Would the witnesses agree that it is not helpful when you're trying to preserve those 53 or 57, we call it, because a few of them, like the, the Moy has three different bogs, um, would, you, would you agree that it's not helpful that when the likes of the National Parks or other interests, in fairness to Peatlands Council or whoever, when they're trying to uh, get 
a small area of bog, because bear in mind there could be a 3,000 acre designated bog and you might want 50 acres or 100 acres to sort the people. And is it, would you agree it's not helpful from what I have seen, especially in Kildare in the last month or two, of objections going in? Because the reality of it is, and whether people want to like this or not like it, if I, I, own, a, I own a bog in a so-called SSE, I don't know what this SSE is, um, and other people around the country, well, I'm not going to even that into an, I have the obvious choice of another bog. Simple as that. And if we want to solve the problem, the environmentalists that I've seen objections coming in from, and others, not alone them, um, if we want this problem solved, every time an objection goes in or a refusal comes in to put people from where one of those uh, raised SAC or so-called um, in parts of the country are, um, then we will end up not solving the problem. And that's bread and butter stuff. And until you get the people on board, and in fairness, the national parks are doing that at the moment. They have the likes RPS doing the science. And allegations has been made in here already about the science uh, that we're down to 1%. What did we know we had? Was there science to back it up? In, this, in, the, in, the, seven, in the 80s, um, and before the Habitats Directive came in in 1997, it is now estimated that our science was up to 40% wrong. Well, if I start 40% wrong at something, I can never get it right. And in fairness, there's a full re-evaluation being done of those bogs to know exactly where we're going, what you can restore, degraded uh, bog, what you can get, get going, how much active raised bog we have. And in your view, do you agree that there should be some benefit if one of those SACs down the road or is performing well, that on the carbon sequestration that you talk about, now, and bear in mind that we're dealing with the Habitats Directive at the moment, but down the road, if someone's bog is doing well, should there be carbon credit uh, financial reward for it? In fairness to the national parks in the, in the re-wetting of what they have done, and I presume, in fairness to Bordemona probably, other than what I've mentioned in the timing, they are liaising with communities so far um, yeah, there is problems in certain areas, there's no point in saying there's not, but they are liaising with communities as far as possible. Um, and in the line of Porrick, you, you mentioned and you, you talked about sheep. Um, farmers were farming the way they had to farm down through the years, right? And then there was a destocking of the sheep on the mountains, and you spoke about this, that the sheep destroyed the mountain. Um, but in fairness, there was a destock, and, and that part of it, I think, is, is being sorted at the moment. But do you agree that if you're a farmer in Connemara, or a farmer in the hill in Sligo, or a farmer below in Donegal, and you have a few cows that go up on the side of the mountain, or your sheep, and if you want to put up new stakes in that, is it a fair thing that that farmer has to go for planning permission? Because I think it is wrong you're, you're obliged under the Department of, of, of Agriculture regulations that you have to keep your cattle from not mixing, and at the same time, you have to, um, you're not allowed to do a fence. And I think there are certain things that Brian's department needs to get to grips with that says if there was a fence there, put up a fence. Because this crack of putting people in their own land through um, that type of torture in planning permission and some genius will come in then of course and object. Um, in the line of the raised bogs um, to Catherine, um, you, you talk about the Dutch and you're right, I think it was Queen Beatrice or whatever. The Dutch, they're mighty, they, they cut all their own away, isn't that correct? They cut all their own away and they came back here then telling us what we'd do and what we wouldn't do. Like, fine, I don't the, think that's actually well, correct. Well, the, the Dutch cut all their bugs away. Yeah, but they never came over here and told us well, what to do. That's the, well, one thing they did not do. You they have were said much that, more diplomatic than that. Well, Thank you. They came back. They came back to buy bog. Sorry. They came back to uh, buy bog in this country. They cut their own away, and there's plenty of them trying to tell us what we can and cannot do. But the reality of it is, they're quite entitled to buy bog wherever they want. I don't mind where they buy it, 
but the reality of it is they cut their own away first before they ever realised the value. Second of all, we are exporting, you know, in this same country where we are telling someone that it cuts five or six hoppers for their own house, we are telling them they cannot go up or they're a criminal as against um, Germany, England and several different countries, including Holland, taking different types of mill peat for be it sewerage systems and all of that around the country. Thank you. Thank you.